Excitec BIM 360 surgery. This morning it's number 49, getting close to number 50, which is next week. Um, today we're going to take a look at the very much, much, much anticipated Revit issues. So I put a quick video on LinkedIn earlier in the week and it's got up around 9,000 views um, and 250 likes and comments. So it's probably going to be pretty popular. And today I'm going to take a look at this feature. So this is a public beta. So it's available for anyone. Um, Autodesk have published the links. So it works upon a downloadable executable that installs on top of Revit and it gives you a new Revit tab called issues. So I'm in my BIM 360 surgery as normal and I'm gonna open this sample architectural project. At the same time, I'm gonna open Revit. You will see I'm using the um, BIM 360 surgery shortcut. One thing to note, this current add-on strangely is only for Revit 2020. Um, 2021 is on the roadmap and I think it will be coming pretty shortly, but for now, this is all Revit 2020. I'm gonna open up the same model from BIM 360. So this is a cloud work shared model. Oh, well, that's not the best uh, error I've ever seen. So let's see what happens. So we'll jump back in to 360. So if we launch the issues tab, you will see there are a couple of issues already in this model as we normally expect with the little push pins, they are color coded based upon status. If we jump into Revit, you will see we have a new tab called issues. And it's a very simple toolbar. It's got uh, two buttons, one is show, if I click show, it shows this uh, new panel called BIM 360 issues. And this is, if we switch back, is a direct replica of the data that exists in BIM 360. So you've got a couple of buttons, which I will go through shortly, and I'm going to jump straight in here. So the way that it works is if I create an issue in BIM 360, it can then be synced and reloaded down in the Revit model so I can then action it. So this is version sort of zero. Um, so it's the initial first one, and this is what we can do. So I can create an issue. I can zoom around the model, and I'm going to say, place an issue on that rear canopy roof, and I'm gonna go A for architectural check roof spec or whatever it may be. I'm going to assign that to myself. I'm going to choose a due date of next week. And you can do the normal stuff you can do with issues. So locations, owners, root causes, descriptions. I've got some custom attributes in for risk and damage scale. But again, you don't need to do that. And you can just create the issue. So there is the issue number 40. And if I switch to Revit, you will see it is not here yet uh, because it's not a dynamic live link as such it needs to be refreshed but if i click this refresh button fingers crossed all works live that the new issue number 40 is now available and if i click it you will see that it hyperlinks the view so the view automatically zooms and you get this sort of strange little sphere this sort of graphic on top of the screen and you then you get the issue. So I can go into it, I can have a look, I can change it. So what I could do in this instance is to check the roof, have a look at it and change it to, let's say it's going to be that. So I've just changed the roof type. Then I can actually update the issue. So I can say, um, I don't actually need to do the description, I can just um, I can just resolve the issue um, and I can say there's a response updated roof type. Click the tick and then what I can also do is just change its status to answered and then click done and you will see the graphic for the push pin will update and if I go back to BIM 360 and refresh this page, this will now update the issue status so it now should be answered and there you go you can see the the roof spec is now answered now obviously the roof is not updated because i've not synced 
and publish my changes. But you get the principle of this starting to work. So we can come back out and you can go around each of these and you could say, okay, that's now changed and I can answer that. That's click done, go back and I can say, well, this window I've answered, so now that can now be closed. That's approved, all changed and updated. And we click OK, and that will then update that. Um, as part of this panel, we also obviously have the filtering, so we can filter by type, we can go by status. So I could say, well, we clear that and just show me the open ones. And then we apply it, you will see then it will just show me this, which I can then go, actually, that's a void, not required. Yes, there's a void and we are done. So a couple of things to note. So the issues only work on 3D currently. So there is no 2D issue support. This is in the pipeline. It's in the roadmap that will come, I think, with version one and version two. Um, so it is just initially what you're seeing on the screen is that the issues can be created in 360, refreshed, and then they sync down into Revit. So the, the principle being is within your review process in 360, create all the issues, then back to the Revit technician, let's say they've got access to all the issues direct in the Revit interface. They can then resolve and update them issues. And then this is sync back or live track back to here. And you can see all these are now answered and we are good to go. So back in Revit, if we refresh it so you've got a filter you've got sorting and you've got this ability to export out a csv so i've not done that i assume it will um that is coming it does not work yet um and then we have this load issues section so this is where we can load issues from different models in that path so if we've got 10 different models there would be obviously 10 different sets of issues in this instance i've only got the one so that's pretty much it for now version zero is you get your issue tab you can hide and you've got show and reload and then the issues then come through um from your um environment um, on BIM 360. So I think it's a really good first step on where they're going to go with all of this. Um, so yeah, just reach out to me, give me a shout if you want some help getting the install, anything like that, and then getting up and running. So that's pretty much it. Um, trying to plan a big surgery for next week because it's the 50th. So leave it with me. Um, I'm trying to come up with something cool, uh, maybe some guests. <laughs> but all will be revealed next week. So thank you very much for joining me. Um, see you all next week and stay safe.